Getting into big code. I can create two windows. Right by going up to window, arrange new window. And you can see I can make even a third window with the same image. Now, a lot of you people that know Photoshop already might be saying, well, Bobby, that's just like a navigator window. Or whatever. What's the difference? Why not? You can start them here. It is different because I get them over here. When you can draw. That kind of an action. So if that was my layout, then the first thing I'm going to do, besides uh, planning out my thumbnails of, um, you know, ideas of his performance as he's saying it, I'm going to start planning out the footfall. So if you want to kind of create your, your ground plane, and then I know I'm going to take a step here. And since he's farther away from camera, there's more time, timing-wise, spent on an object when it's farther away. And then the space it gets farther apart as he comes forward. That's what gives you that sense of perspective and distance, is that, you know, things move slower as they're away from you. Like if you ever see a car, obviously, and it goes, and then it's fast here, the spacing is far apart, and then it gets, as it gets away, it's tighter spacing. Same thing when it's coming towards you. I did a scene in uh, Lion King where they're like, a wing, a wing, a wing, a wing, and it's literally like this. It's coming over the hilltop, and he sees a bug and he's distracted and he follows the bug, right? But I had to do this, I had to plan out. He spent a lot of time when he was small, and then when he got bigger, it kind of comes faster towards camera, right? So as a, I'm planning out, I used to do like one piece of paper like this, and I'll plan out all my footfalls. Okay, he's gonna hit here, and then this bit is gonna hit here. And I do that by just drawing a quick little drawing, spacing-wise, okay, he's, when he's here, he'll be about this large. And I get a sense of, okay, these are where his feet will be here. And then, and I'll, sometimes I'll do it in different colors so I can see it. And then when he's here, his feet will be here. And I know where each one of those footfalls are going to hit as they go back. And that becomes my guide. And I keep that underneath my scene with my background. My background is underneath, and then my guide is there. And now I'm just putting on one piece of paper and doing the first drawing, the second drawing. And I'm getting the rhythm, so I know where his head will hit. His head's are going to hit here, here, and here on the ups. And then his head's are going to hit here, here, and here on the downs. So I can do plan it all out in one page. And that's my answer. Did you ever study acting or theater as part of your training? You know, my training in, in performance was really watching movies and TV and stuff. I read, I have read a lot of books on acting. Um, and at, in the old days at Disney, we actually had improv coaches that would come in. That's great um, to learn a little bit like the, you know, the old Greek style of acting and that kind of thing, about icons. And, uh, but mostly I've picked up on performance by just being a student, a student performance. I love movies, I love TV shows. I love watching how people act. That's why a big Disney thing was always go to the mall and draw people. You know, not only do you learn about how people shift weight, how they talk, how they walk, how they relate to each other, you also learn the subtleties of what makes a character a character. Everybody's a character in their own way. You know, uh, whether they're kind of outgoing or flamboyant, or whether they're very kind of you know shy and mousy or whatever it is, they all have their own ways of moving and reacting. And that's the thing that as animators you should be doing. I highly recommend going to the mall, going to the zoo, going to public places, LAX airport, they're all been there, right? And spend some time just hanging out and watching people and getting an understanding of the human body and, and acting and what makes it so. <coughs> Anybody else have a question? Well, I finished the comp. Hi. Yeah, I, I feel, you know, I'm not a mocap fan, so I'll just put speaking from the CG side. And I really like any kind of keyframe animation, whether it be CG or 2D, where they use reference in a, in a more limited way. Uh, and it truly is reference. It's not tracing over or anything like that. So I'm more of a fan of, like, 101 Dalmatian, when they would... And they had Anita coming down the stairs, or I think it was Mark Davis or something. You know, they had some references they went by. 
but they really just kind of took it and looked at it, maybe drew over a couple of key poses, and then they put it aside. It's not tracing over it like we see in some blue films and, and poorly done mocap where they're trying to religiously go for it. It's more, you know, referencing a way of what are the things that makes it unique and makes it real for an audience to see, and then how do I infuse the caricature element after that? So I like references to use for, um, for guidance and really inspiration, and then kind of put aside so that it can be uh, uh, not really a copy or trace, you know. But I answer the question. Let us go be in the stinky. And they will juggle them around spontaneously. You know, it doesn't mean that they don't have it. How do you feel about it as long as Disney itself kind of abandoned rotoscoping when you were working there? The, the closest, uh, I didn't work on Pocahontas, actually my twin brother Tom, we have a booth there. And for those who don't know, we're also doing a talk called Two Guys Nine Steve Bancroft tomorrow at uh, Sunday at 3.30, I think it is, 3 o'clock, no? 3.30, something like that. But um, that was, Pocahontas was probably the closest that Disney ever came to really kind of going over the drawings a little bit or the, the live action reference a little bit too much. There's definitely some scenes that I think got a little bit rotoscopy in their appearance. Uh, and I'm not a fan of that. Um, but for the most part, people like Blink uh, um, really worked hard not to, you know, they, they used this properly. It, was, it wasn't just tracing over it. It was really just getting the performance ideas from it and then putting it aside and making Pocahontas his own. Uh, and Glenn is the best example of that, I think, of how to use photo, uh, photo live action reference. If I cannot see the effects of my adjustment there, I'm revealing the original image of the meeting, right? So I even thought I came to the flash right now. It's wrong. It's getting lighter. I did uh, the same for Kronk too, where he had, had the little shoulder, shoulder angel, angel and devil, right? Funny idea, great idea by the storyboard artists and the writers and all that. And the best thing about Kronk was his voice. Patrick Warburg did the voice of Kronk, and um, I loved it. It was just so inspiring. Every scene I got from him was like an animator's dream, right? It was like, you know, he had the personality. He fused it into every single line that he did. And uh, one of my favorite scenes to do on the film was, uh, when he's talking to you, Tony, he says, oh, what was it? Um, oh, my switch pups. No, um, oh, the voice, the voice for Cusco. Cusco's voice, that poison? You know, and I, I listened to it over and over again. What? Oh, that poison? Uh, and, that, and, and, Kronk, and that scene was a close-up like this, and it was all about I spent a lot of time posing that out and thumbnailing it so that I could really capture the essence of, of Spinach Puff love and, and promptness. In Aladdin, I did a character, another comedy character. Comedy to me is always about contact. I was talking about that a little bit earlier. Faster than slow, bigger than small, whatever the contact is. To me, it's about creating that startling surprise for the audience in some way. So I always try to look for that in my scene, whether it be for movement or expression. Like if I had a big expression where his eyes were open, I would always start out with his clothes first. This is where I was working with Will Finn, who created the character of uh, Yaga. Lucky City is very generous to bring a lot of things on the show. What was Godfrey the divorce of Yago? He's a very annoying man. <laughs> Any other questions about Ron Yago? I was very nervous when I got the character wrong because up until that point I had never drawn a human hand before in my life. Um, because I had, up until that point I'd done a clock, a Beauty and the Beast, 
I've done Yago the parrot, who's just like feathers. Um, 